amazing product we have called sill screens. As you can see, our lighthouse was designed with a sill screen. And when, at first glance, when you look at this, you say, how can I create that design? That's amazing, you must be an artist. And actually it's quite simple. We have about 50 designs from Mako, and you can see one of their designs right here. And then Bisque Imports also probably has about 100 different designs as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this exact a lighthouse on this piece of bisque. So I want to show you how easy it is step by step. So I was going to put these aside for now so I have some room. Here's my silk screen here of the lighthouse. And it's hard to see it, but when you touch it or feel it, there's a smooth side to it and a rough side to it. And the smooth side must go down on the piece first. So we've clearly marked on it up. So when you lay it on your ceramic piece, you want to make sure that you lay it up. So before we get into that, we've got uh, a couple different colors. We've got the uh, Mako's uh, black strobe coat, and we have the design aligner. Either one will work. Uh, actually, all colors in the strobe coat line will work. Um, if it's dark, it's even better. So we're using a black on this in this case, and we're going to instead we're going to use the uh, Mako's designer liner, which comes out really uh, nice and crisp and black. So we're going to use that on the plate this time. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, give your bottle a good shake. You want to squeeze that onto a ceramic tile. And in this case, it's a glazed tile, it makes it a lot easier. And then we have what's called a wax, uh, sorry, a silk screen medium. And what this does is it thickens up the designer liner so that we can push it through with our finger. If we try to push it through with our finger right now, it's going to bleed too much. So we want to add this product here. Um, and you just want to take a pinch with your fingers. And you want to put that right in the designer glider and then take your palette knife and you're just going to mix it back back and forth and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it to almost like a peanut butter consistency that's what you can think of so it's not quite it's still a little bit running so we want to add a little bit a pinch more into there and just keep doing that uh, until it gets nice and thick or um, sort of like that peanut butter we talked about and it's pretty well there now uh, so we should be able to do enough for this plate. So what we want to do is we've done this, use this uh, silk screen many times, and we want to just take a um, masking tape. And if I can find the beginning of this masking tape, which I've done, and we just want to put a little bit of masking tape to hold it down. Not that critical uh, to do that, but just it helps. So you're, you're not worried about it moving um, during the process. So just a little piece of tape there, a little piece of tape here. And what I've done, if you notice, there's a Sharpie around the uh, image of the piece. And that's there so that um, when I'm pushing the uh, medium through the sill screen, I don't have to go anywhere further than that line. So that's kind of like my guiding uh, line. That I don't want to go past that because if I go past that, then I'm going to leave marks on the bisque, which I don't want to. So here we go. We're just going to flatten our piece. I can actually put one more piece on the bottom here just so it doesn't move. And this stuff, this it's very flexible, so it'll go around a mug or anything that's round. Really good. So what we're going to do, just take your finger and we're just going to push it through the screen like that. And this just takes a few few seconds, but I'm going to do the whole piece. Try to do it really quickly because you're getting the idea of what you're doing. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking from the middle and pushing out. I'm not trying to push out so the piece doesn't come back to me. So I'm pushing out from the middle. Probably could have made a little bit more, but I think I'm going to be okay. I, mean, I probably should have made a little bit more, but we're going to get there. Can you rip the silk screen? It's really hard to rip the silk screen. The only way you're going to rip the silk screen is if you um, sort of tear it. It's pretty uh, durable. Uh, the silk screen is so you really can't uh, can't rip it now I've tried to I didn't cut it properly and I tried to do it with my fingers and I sort of uh, distorted it trying to rip it with my fingers so if you're going to cut the silk screen you want to do it with a pair of scissors and how many uses can I get out of a silk screen great question if you wash this right afterwards and we'll do that in a separate little video you'll see that it's very, really easy to wash up and you can use it hundreds and hundreds of times we probably use this one I'm going to say a couple 200 times it's hard to do it right um, 
right away you have to go and wash it out because I've tried to do it right from the same one but you, you can't see where you've where you've actually gone through so it's better to and I'm just getting down to the little bit here hope I've got everything I think I'm gonna do a little bit more on the top hopefully I have enough here push that off my palette knife there just turn it around a little bit there and I'm just squeezing that through the silk screen and you can see it's not going to take any talent at all as long as you've got a finger Kids love doing this kind of work. And that's pretty well, hopefully I got everything. And I'm gonna pull the, paper, the, the tape back and you'll see the design appear really quickly. Isn't that amazing? Within seconds, you've got yourself a really classy piece. I wanna show you how easy it is to wash out these sill screens. Just get a little water running, put it in the sink, and then I usually take my little uh, sponge there and I'm just gonna go over top of it and just kind of move the uh, water over top of it lightly and just keep moving it around. And then eventually it loosens up all by itself and you can see it coming out real, real easy now. A little hot, there you go. And just be gentle, you don't have to be rough with it. I'm just being very, very gentle with it and just pushing the black through the screen and that's warm water, right? That's just warm water, yeah. I had it on a little bit too hot, so I put some more cold in there. And then we're almost there. You can see I got a little bit more at the back. I got to scrub a little bit more. I'm not scrubbing hard. I'm just doing it really sloth. And then sometimes if it sticks like that, just move it around to another piece. Give it a second, come back to it, and it's ready to come off. There we go. And then what you're going to do is just take it off and dry it on a paper towel like that and let it dry. So as you can see, I pushed the, my finger a little bit too far past the sill screen. And this is what happened. I got a little black mark uh, at the top of my lighthouse. So I want to clean that up a bit. So I'm just taking a sponge. I got a little bit of water in the sponge. I'm just going to scrape out the, uh, the black and it should come out pretty good. What you want to be careful is keep moving the sponge around so you don't keep smudging the, the bisque wear and you'll get that right out. And that's pretty good. You don't have to be too, because I'm going to put some more color on there, so it should be no problem there. So that's how you clean it up if you make a mistake. Very simple. So after transferring the sill screen, now it's time to actually paint the piece. So here we've got our lighthouse. And I went ahead and painted the red on the stripes of the, of the lighthouse. And I did that three coats of uh, solid red coverage. Now I want to come back and I want to do some watercolor techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to the paint so that um, you still you, you still see the black outlines and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add water to each color. So I'm gonna try the brown there and I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it and get it so it's a water consistency. So a little bit more water. And I'm gonna try to use the steps uh, one more time. There we go. And I'm gonna paint the steps in this sort of brownie taupey color. And these are stroking coats, right Scott? These are stroking coats, exactly. So just what you want to do is when you first put it on, you want to make sure that you can still see the black and actually you can. So it's a good, and you just want to paint. So it's really easy to do. You don't have to be an artist to do this. You just have to be able to fill in the, like a coloring book. And so you can see I got the steps there and we'll just go down a little further. And I can always come back with a black liner and just do a little more dark if I have to. But that's how easy it is to do the steps and it creates a nice little effect. Once I'm done with that color, I can just uh, rinse it in the acrylic oil, removing all the excess uh, color down there. And then we can come back and we've got some uh, rocks here. So we'll do a little bit of gray in the rocks. So again, we're gonna add some water to my gray. And maybe just a little bit more. You can always add more color to it. There we go. And now we just want to go in with the rocks and do the same thing. And we can add a little bit of blue and grays and all that kind of stuff in the rocks. But right now we're just doing the, the grays here. So it's pretty quick. The black still shows through, which is great. And then we'll go to the other side a little bit. And then we're going to come back with one more color. We're almost finished that. 
wipe that off my silly coil. And we're just gonna do a little bit of the grass green. A little bit more water. And we're just gonna go in through, through here and touch up a little bit of the grass. And then when I'm done that, I can come back with the blue. So you can just keep going with that. And uh, we'll do some uh, blue for the sky. We'll do some water for the, for the splash. In a way, that's how easy I'll, I'll fire this piece and we'll see it and in a later video. We're gonna also clear glaze this um, piece when we're done and we have an option on the brush glaze or dipping glaze and I'll show you how to do both. So we're finished doing all the watercolor on the uh, lighthouse plate. And now it's time to clear glaze the plate. We have two options. We can dip the plate or we can brush glaze it. Uh, I prefer to use the brushing glaze because it's uh, so much easier uh, to, to apply. And we're gonna use this uh, Mako CB604 fan glaze brush. And because we didn't paint the entire plate, we've got a lot of bisque showing, we're gonna require two coats of the clear glaze. Normally, if we painted the whole piece uh, with strobe coat colors, we would probably just need one coat of clear glaze, but because we we're showing a lot of bisque. We're just gonna do uh, two coats. So here's how easy it is to do. Key is to put your brush right into the clear glaze and just tap it off a little bit so it doesn't drip. And you're just laying it on. You're not going back and forth and scrubbing. You're just basically laying it on. There you go. You want to have it thoroughly dry. This was probably an hour uh, before it was dry. So once it's dry, you don't want it to be wet because if it's wet, you're going to move that glaze underneath it. So you just want to uh, kind of lay the glaze on top of it. You're not going scrubbing back and forth like this. You're just laying it on top and away you're going. If you do that, you will not have any streak or drip marks or anything like that. And that's one coat right there. So we'll do the same thing on the back of the, glaze, uh, back of the plate and we'll continue to do that one more time and you'll get a nice result. And then once we see it out of the kiln, you'll see the finished result. So here's the finished result of our cell screen that we did. And it turned out quite nice. Um, just wanna give you a couple pointers here. The red is full strength stroke and coat and the blues and the beiges and the green, we watercolored those down so that we didn't over uh, write the black that we already had imprinted with the cell screen. So it's a really nice effect. So definitely check out our sales screens on site. We have sales screens from Mako and Bisque Imports. Mako will actually produce a custom sales screen for you. And Bisque Imports has a kit that you can produce your own sales screens. So check them out on our website at ceramicarts.com for all the details.